All right, next project for the day, we are going to remove all of the old electronics, all the instrument panels here. We're just gonna take those out and then I'm gonna fill those holes in with some marine plywood and fiberglass. And all of these will basically turn into just one um, chart plotter, radar, combo, uh, multi-display unit, the, the uh, B&G Zeus. And that should be able to display everything for us and then that links to cell phones and everything else so it'll be easy um, to watch from even the TV I think I've heard that can link to. So, Pretty cool. I love it. We've done that project before. <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. We had to do this on the Catalina. And I tried to fill the whole gap with, uh, we had a little bit of plywood in there and then a bunch of uh, fiberglass sheets instead of using some fairing or something a little bit easier. And I was letting the fiberglass dry every time and then sanding it. And it was a whole ordeal, but now We've got the hang of it, I think, so it should be an easier project this time, hopefully. So I'm just trying to pry these out. I just went around it with, started with a little razor blade. I found this little blade here. That was kind of good, but scared to scuff up too much. I mean, we're gonna end up repainting this whole thing anyways, but I think, uh, this little plastic tool I actually found in the uh, in our freezer and working pretty well. Let's scrape it all out with that and then hopefully they'll pop out. They're all stuck in there with sealant so it's not as easy as it looks. Just got the first one out and this is maybe like a quarter, three eighths inch thick, something like that. And I thought that it was going to be in my old boat, it was like half inch at least plywood and then fiberglass over it. Maybe we'll uh, just kind of put something back there and then uh, fair it out a little bit, put some fiberglass over it and then put a whole sheet across here. The worst part about that is we're gonna have to repaint this and the previous owner did such a good job repainting the whole thing. Um, but we'll just have to repaint this little section. Hopefully it's not that bad. I've never used all grip before, but I think that's what he used and yeah, turned out really nice. All right, and the last one is coming out. This stuff is really sticky. And I unplugged it from the back already. But these old ancient instruments are now officially retired. Congratulations, guys. Have fun in your retirement. We got five holes to patch. That's going to be fun. Malvina's so excited. She loves patching holes. Love it. <laughs> all right, so it's time to uh, cut in the chart plotter hole here. Got it all taped up here. Kind of traced out. Kind of the tough part about doing all this is... How do you level something on a potentially unlevel boat? So, got this, was trying to figure something out. I have this little digital level, that, which you can kind of tear out and zero it out. But the boat's always swaying, too, kind of rocking back and forth. So I ended up kind of going through with this. Still probably not perfect, because it's kind of based on what this kind of fairing in the back here is so um, I think the best way to do it is we just kind of sit back here and <laughs> make sure it looks right you got to do it by eye on here so I'm gonna cut this out with the jigsaw and then I'm gonna lay up some glass just on a table this is all just fiberglass solid fiberglass so um, there's no wood there to bond to or anything else so I'm just gonna try and match this thickness and then cut out those holes and then I can pop that in there and do a couple sheets of glass on the back side, a couple sheets on the front side and then we'll fair it out and uh, repaint it and hopefully that works out well. So the instructions say to do a little half inch hole 
right here where the uh, center of this is. So to start that, I'm just gonna use this little center punch here and then that'll still be there. That'll pierce a perfect hole through that. So I could take this template off if I decide to. I might end up just drilling right through it. Pretty handy little trick to get through these templates. And uh, for the hole, I'm gonna use a little Forstner bit because it's got pretty nice little center point on there. It should dig in there perfect and be a nice precise hole instead of using a regular drill bit that might just wiggle a little bit. Trying to uh, keep all the dust just going straight into that vacuum instead of going into that upper portion there where when we take down that hatch it'll be all fiberglassy so that's working so well. It's Kinda of crazy. Ah, perfect. All those holes drilled, and I'm glad I uh, did the little trace around there because, yeah, kind of messed up the whole template there. But now I'm gonna cut that out with my nice new jigsaw. Been wanting one of these for years, but finally got it. Found a good deal online for it, and stoked to try it out. Little tip: get a carbide tipped blade because I can't believe how fast that just chewed through this blade kind of hard to see um, but yeah you can see I only made it that far and I'm not very good on this saw quite yet and I messed up the marking too so I tried to use some um, dry erase marker to erase the permanent marker it kind of worked but not as good as I'd heard it works um, I'm gonna try this metal blade and hopefully that works a little bit better but yeah, might need to resort to the uh, sawzall with the carbide tipped blade because I don't have a carbide tipped for the jigsaw. I'm sure I'll end up using the uh, jigsaw for something eventually, but the sawzall just worked so much better. Even the straightness of the line there is better, so I'm going to use that for the rest of it. Got these blades on there. They're the Diablo metal blades. Not carbide tipped at all, but no struggling with that one. Uh, this one I was also using Diablo blades, but um, yeah, I don't know if it's the speed of it or what, but chewed through that blade real quick. Okay, the jigsaw is kind of necessary for, for the start of the hole there. Then I'll just get that started and then finish it off with the saws on. Go nice and straight and quick and cheaper blades. Great moment of truth. I'm going to put this in here and it fits actually pretty nice. Surprisingly a little bit loose, but I guess that's good just in case I didn't get those cuts perfectly level There's still plenty of plenty of meat for the uh, screws to sink into right there And I might actually throw a little wrap of glass around there, too I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is a little bit of fairing that I might do right there Just to fill in that gap so it sits nice and flush flatten it out a little bit and uh, yeah, looks pretty good, stoked. Can't wait to have this thing up. All right, so I just got everything all kind of taped and plasticed off. Ended up just taping up the whole hole right here. And it kind of seems stupid, but I think we're gonna be happy I did it because I just have to sand this little bit right here up through that hole. But the only way to sand that really is right in the whole galley here. So um, I taped it off <laughs> as much as I could. Keep all the fiberglass out of our galley here. And hopefully that works out. And then I'm just going to lay some, some glass up there and fill up those old holes. If you have hair that might get in your eyes at all, uh, I've found it's a good good idea to wear a beanie. And you don't, uh, you know, wipe hair out of your eyes and then end up getting fiberglass in your eyes. So I got my full suit on and yeah, I'm gonna get to sanding. So I'm taking this extra kind of <laughs> precautions because first of all, it's in the galley and second of all, I have to have my whole face up there too. So I'm gonna try and keep from being itchy as much as possible. All right, so we got all the edges kind of sanded up, and if anyone thinks that that plastic was a bit overkill, they are probably completely right, because you know what's funny? I probably shouldn't admit this. 
this hatch <laughs> was open the whole time. So everything was coming out that hole and then kind of floating back in here. I mean, most of this was all plasticed up anyways, but eh, we did get a little bit of little dust in here. <laughs> so that was pretty dumb on my part. All right, so I'm done with <laughs> that portion of it. Not sure if I like how it turned out. This side is a little bit kind of under. I could have gone out a little bit more probably and cut that flush after it was dry. Um, I didn't really think about that. Uh, but really all we need is something for, th for that fairing compound to go into and just a kind of backing plate. These are kind of pushed out a little bit. But again, it's just gonna fill in with fairing and uh, I think we should be all right there. We'll see. Uh, it doesn't need to be super sturdy. Really just a backing for for it. And then I'm going to lay another couple sheets of glass over the front side, which is really what's going to give it the strength anyway. So hopefully it works out. We'll keep you posted. So we got all the holes filled in like you saw already. Um, these are pretty sturdy. Just three sheets of, of minimal glass there. Yeah, some epoxy, and uh, so now it's just time to kind of chip away all this old paint. I'm just going to chip it first, and then we'll put the fairing over it, and uh, and then we'll sand down the whole thing until it gets back down to glass, put another layer of glass over it, and then, and then do some more fairing probably so that we can kind of straighten this whole area out, and then... Um, and then we'll paint and put the uh, chart plotter in. So <laughs> it sounds simple enough, but it's probably a two or three day job at least still. So, um, oh yeah, here's a little trick for the um, chipping the paint off. You can see I forgot here, but to keep a clean line, at least this is what we do for electrical work when we're taking off outlets that have been painted over and stuff. Just score a little tiny line. You probably can't see that, but just take the razor blade and, and score along here like that and then it should I'm hoping uh, just chip off in a nice clean line so you can see that that is working pretty well there I scored along that line and it's, uh, it's chipping off nice just oh that one didn't go so well <laughs> oh well so aside from that spot that I showed you guys on film right here the rest of it came out pretty nice and clean hopefully that's just gonna make the sanding a little bit nicer and more controlled this side is the one that I did before I remembered that trick so we'll just sand that away then I have to sand into those edges a little bit anyways just to blend in the paint a little bit so not a huge deal but it is kind of nice to just be able to mark your line first I'm sure this isn't super necessary, but I'm gonna sand around these edges a little bit too, just to make sure that the epoxy and filler kind of stick to there as good as possible. Yep, just thought I'd show you that part too. So I just tried to sand this off with my little Dremel sanding bit, and it's this one's actually not a Dremel sanding bit. I think I got this a long time ago when I was kind of a cheap ass, and uh, it just left all this black mark around there because the the wheel part of it ended up sliding down once the once the Dremel was going. Hopefully the actual Dremel branded one will do a little bit better. I'll keep you guys posted. Yes, that tool worked way better. Stayed on the whole time, grinded nice and smooth. Buy the brand, brand name stuff sometimes, it's worth the hassle save you from having to kind of fix all those little scuff up marks which kind of weakened the fiberglass but not a big deal but yeah definitely worth the extra couple dollars all right so for this one i'm using the uh 407 low density fairing filler seems like it might be a little bit sturdier than the uh, 410 and i'm just mixing it up to a pretty thick consistency here I used a small cup too first and it was way too small and ended up just pouring powder all over the place and kind of making a mess. 
So I have to clean that up before Malvina gets home. Yeah, I started with that small of a cup right there and then ended up transferring to this. I poured about five squirts or four squirts of uh, each, the resin and the hardener, and maybe six or seven scoops of the fairing filler and it more than doubled in size so just be aware of that if you're mixing this all right here's the first first go around at it just sand that off when once it dries and find all the low spots and we'll fill it in this one's definitely going to have more low spots but i was kind of running out of material at that point and didn't really want to mix up too much more yeah, not too bad should be all right. Hopefully it sands pretty easy. I haven't tried this stuff yet. All right, so everything dried up pretty nicely overnight. I'm gonna start sanding now. This is all pretty freaking solid. Some low spots here, so we won't need too much sanding. Just a little bit more filler there and try and smooth it out a little bit. And then this has some high spots. I already went over it with just kind of a sanding block like this just to mark the high spots kind of and then I'm gonna hit it with the with the orbital sander to make things a little bit easier yeah that'll be the project for today then I'll have to find something else to do while it all dries all the new stuff looking pretty good definitely some low spots actually <laughs> It's kind of crazy that is just the fiberglass backing right there and that little spot right there. So that's going to be super thin, but I figure with the with the new sheet of glass over the front and the glass in the back, that's plenty of strength really. It's not really any sort of load bearing area. I just want to protect it from someone bashing into there or something. So should be fine. Well, got the second coat on. Yeah, surprisingly, that's still a low spot. Went over it with this little 12 inch paint shield, but it's a nice little straight edge that kind of allowed me to go across and smooth everything out. And the idea here was to kind of fair that out a little bit and make it more flat since it's a little bit rounded and the chart plotter doesn't fit in there perfect. Keep it from having to use too much sealant to, to mend that gap there. Um, Still seems to be a little bit of a gap. I don't know if I should do two coats of the fairing or what, but um, yeah, not as good as I thought it was going to be, but not too bad either. We'll figure it out. All right, well, I really mucked that one up. Tried to do some fairing over there too. Yeah, I think I mixed it a little bit too thin. It's a little bit out of reach, so it's super hard to work. And it just looks really ugly all around. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna end up doing two coats there. Basically, the only reason I did that is because it was a little bit thin on the other side. Right here, it was just like, just sheets of fiberglass right there. So I tried to, tried to add some thickness, some girth to that so that the, uh, chart plotter mount has something to bite into and I can wrap a little bit of glass around that because I think if you just fold it in half over itself it's not going to make a very good no structure there so that was the idea behind it but it looks pretty crappy so we'll see how it turns out I don't think it's a big deal still this stuff kind of carves away fairly well, You guys easy. probably can't tell any difference, but I just went through. It's a little bit soft still. So I went through and just kind of compacted it with a little rubber glove, kind of fingered it and kind of shaped it in a little bit better. And it's actually looking way better to me. Um, it's still lumpy and, you know, not good, but be way less sanding, so. Hopefully that's not a, you know, frowned upon technique, but looks pretty good to me. Even better from out here, you can kind of see, and it just kind of smoothed out all those corners, and that almost looks fiberglassable right there, just a little bit of sanding. So, happy with that little thought there. All right, I got it all sand it up and looking decent for fiberglass and then we got some 
pretty good wind and gale force warning. And I also noticed that this is not freaking perfect. And if I'm going all this work, I might as well make it perfect. So I want to seal that little gap right there, but that's really hard to do with only, you know, less than an inch to work with of filler and then a big gap to come below it. So I came up with a little bit, a little idea here. And I got this new, <laughs> haven't used it yet, but it's epoxy mold release formula. And I think what I'm gonna do is spray that on here and then fill this with the filler. And then I can just slap that up, hold it up there, and that should hopefully fill that gap. This is a really pretty straight little angle there. And, uh, and then I can sand any excess away after that. So that's the idea. We'll see how it goes. Well, I think it was the right call to redo another little filler batch before I glass over anything. And I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I ended up putting whatever packing tape over the wood actually first and then spraying that with the epoxy stuff. Because when I sprayed just the wood, it just seemed to absorb right into the wood. So I doubt that would work very well. And then I filled that one in a little bit better. Because that was a little bit concave still. But yeah, that form looks like it's going to you know, hold up. <laughs> there goes my support. Thanks, wind. And then I ended up, since I had some left over, I ended up smoothing that out a little bit too. Which I'm glad I did. Because that looked really ugly before. I forget if I showed you guys that one. But uh, yeah, tried to sand it down, but it just wasn't enough on there. So added some more filler to it and smoothed that out. Looks pretty good now. Pretty much glassable. So as much as, uh, you know, we're trying to go sailing and all that, and we're gonna appreciate the wind. This is kind of getting ridiculous. This is like our fifth gale force wind warning day that we've had since we've been here in Marina Del Rey. But now, <clears throat> I think is the moment of truth. It's kind of tacky enough and I kind of want to do it right now just in case I need to be able to kind of press it back together. So I'm gonna take this off. Hopefully that little mold release thing works. It doesn't feel like it's working super great. Uh, I don't know, what do I do? Should I wait till it's fully hard and then pull it off? Maybe keep the shape at least and I can kind of chip it off. It's just, that's not coming easy. I'm gonna wait. So I just pulled off the little angle right here. That was pretty sticky actually still with the tape. So I'm glad I didn't uh, trust that epoxy mold stuff but this came off nice and i was right it, it was really sticky i was trying to pull it off when it was kind of partially cured but after i waited it turned out really nice almost looks like there's still tape on there but pretty sure <laughs> that's all of it anyways that uh, still has to cure a little bit before i sand it but looking good found a little hack all right, got that last coat of the uh, 407 all sanded down and looking pretty good right here. I'm going to come back with the 410 micro light fill fairing filler and uh, just kind of do one big last sweep over this. That'll fill all these holes. I didn't want to grind that out because that's actually the the depth I needed at. The chart plotter looks pretty good in there. There's a couple little tiny holes here and there and then obviously these little bit right here and I think there was a little bit right here. I ended up sanding off the marking there. Yeah, I think once we get that last coat I'm just gonna do a big giant sweep across here I think and then fill any imperfections in the existing old stuff too and we'll be good. Hopefully that stuff is a little bit easier to sand and be more precise with. I think that's the idea behind it. We got the four, 410 uh, micro light bearing filler here. It's crazy how much 
How many scoops? This is just two pumps of epoxy. I already did one full scoop. I'm sure I'm gonna need more than that. Gotta get it real nice and thick. I'm becoming quite the expert in wet systems. I'm gonna be a boat bearing guy. All right, Malvina is back in town and Connor's <laughs> directly picked me up from the airport and straight to great old projects. I can't wait. He's been waiting for me <laughs> to do them. Just kidding, he did not wait. Been hard at work the whole time while she's out there drinking margaritas in Arizona. Peanut butter. Some holes in there, Connor. Go back, go back. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Luckily, I got the best helper ever. Look at her, just looking all pretty. Security. <laughs> Security. Uh, got that last little layer over there, and I don't know what to do here. This is terrible. Maybe I'm just being too much of a perfectionist, but. I can't get these <laughs> lines to scrape out smooth, so I just ended up kind of globbing some on there, and then we're gonna have to do some sanding, and then probably another little layer just to fill all the little holes, because every time I drag that thing, I just get these little tiny holes in there, and uh, yeah, that's as good as it's gonna get on this pass. Best part about these projects is you get to take breaks after, because you have to let it dry. stuff up and I learned that the it was kind of holding me up here I was like what is this yellow wire that is a wire to where you can hook that up if you were a power boat to where it would automatically turn on with uh, your ignition or something like that kind of a relay put for that not a power boat so we want to be able to turn off all our engine instruments and everything else and just be sailing so we're just going to tie these two red and yellow wires together then the black goes to the negative from the uh, batteries kind of the same thing with the so this also is the same thing so we're just going to tie the red and yellow together black goes to black and then uh, the blue is for an external alarm so if you wanted I think from what I kind of read from the pictures I looked <laughs> he has at. a hard time reading I'll read it over <laughs> it looks like the blue is actually an alarm output so if you set a distance alarm to where the radar picks up you know a boat within 10 miles of you while you're on watch at night then you could set up an alarm um, in the aft cabin to wake you up if you're solo sailing or something like that even then we're always going to be on watch so we won't really need that we're not going to worry about that for now so I'll just cap that off and i'm going to hook this up what do you mean finally... i take naps all the time i know we're going to need that as a backup whenever <laughs> i'm on the watch <laughs> <laughs> we'll set up an alarm <laughs> but not today all right, I'll show you the finished product. I'll stay awake. <laughs> I'll try. Oh, yeah. Here's one more thing, actually. So we were going to do separate for all the instruments and radar and chart plotter at first, I was thinking. 
But now I'm thinking, well, we don't want the instruments on, like the wind instrument and depth and speed and all that to be um, powered up if the chart plotter is not on. So I am going to tie that to the same circuit. We don't need individual control of that because if one's on, the other doesn't need to be on. One's not on, the other doesn't need to be on. <laughs> Malvina is our professional painter now. She's becoming professional as we speak. Do you hear the keyword becoming? Everything I read says for professional use only. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm pretty sure you're, you drink acetone, right? And you rub your around on your skin. Uh -huh, that's how you clean your, your hands. <laughs> clean your eyeballs out with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trying to go for a new skin regime. Re regime? Regime. Regime. <laughs> <laughs> Going for a new skin regime. So just looking, looking at facts. No, Connor's putting me into the project of painting where the old nav was taken out. We're putting the new, we've sanded it down and it's all looking pretty whack right now. Uh, we're gonna try and make it look nice. I have no idea what I'm doing. But Connor says that's every time he does a project, he has no idea what he's doing. So we're gonna use good old Goog and YouTube and figure it out. First time you do anything, you don't know what you're doing. But I know what I'm doing because I got the easiest project I've had on this boat so far. Easy fish tape. It starts down here at the mast and it runs nice up in here in conduit. Can you believe that? Getting wire from from here to here took about three hours <laughs> but getting wire from the mast all the way up to there is going to be about um five minutes or less so i'm happy now hello there mate <laughs> welcome to painting with malvina <laughs> all right and try to at least get something going on here. All those painters out here, you may be laughing, but this is a test, kind of like sewing. You, hopefully it works out. So here we go. I followed Connor's procedure. I have two pairs of gloves on and got my ventilator. And then where's my little mixers? I'm gonna mix it up. I'll show you the ratio in just a second. All right, so show you the ratios we're working with. These are the paints. I have the 545 Epoxy Primer, Finish Primer, the D8001. I'm gonna mix it with the 545 Epoxy Primer, Finish Primer, the D3400. Apparently it's the one to one. Thanks to, I got, I don't know if you can see this, Probably can't see it on the camera, but I got the All Grip Poxy Primer, all their data sheet, and it's basically telling me to do the mixing ratio is one to one base converter, and the reducer I'm using is the T0031, and it says five to 10%. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start just small. I'm gonna do a 50 milliliter and then 50 milliliter, and then I'll use the little five to 10% that it has on this fancy little cup. Mix it up and then it's, it's an induction time of 15 minutes. So let it sit for 15 minutes, mix it again, and apply it. So I'm talking like I know what I'm doing, but I have no idea. But you gotta try it out, figure it out. <laughs> I feel like I've been here before. I feel like I've been here before. <laughs> Bottom paint, here we go again. <laughs> Just working on the top now. Connor's laughing at my little paint station because we definitely have a painting table I could have used, but that's all right. I actually got my mixer, uh, everything I mixed up in there because it is really windy and I don't want it to fall over. So I'm gonna let that sit for 15 minutes and then I'll come back, do our first coat. All right, it is definitely not pretty, but I'm glad that that's just the primer. We're gonna sand it, put another layer. Have some pretty bad areas you can kind of see in the light, but 
at least I got a feel for the paints and yeah it was definitely way harder to paint with than I expected. I started off with this brush that just was so bad and then so Connor gave me a really nice one. I'm still working on trying to get this paint matching. I better hurry up because wow wow oh that looks so nice it's putting my paint job to shame look at that difference we gotta yeah do some work baby baby now he's working hard in here to get it connected so he can actually turn it on can't wait <laughs> fired up now still got some wire uh, clean up to do but it's all spliced and the whole <laughs> cabin is a mess. <laughs> Melvina is not doing anything back there. Ow. I'm bumping my head in here again. Look this whole place is a freaking mess but oh my gosh look at that. It's <laughs> it's on. I still got some setup to do. We'll get back to you when it's all cool.